Hello, Antonio here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. This is the Rock Life Podcast. Another session, another rendition. Man, we are having such a good time. I think this is our eighth uh, installment, and it's been so great as we are going through the Rock Life Podcast. Again, this is a sermon rewind of the messages that we have been uh, hearing and been experiencing here at the Rock. I want to encourage you to go check that out. Again, you'll see each one marked through its corresponding week. Uh, the Your World series, we've touched on marriage, we've touched on parenting, and this week we got to touch on our health, uh, which is a big part of your world, a big part of my world. And the cool thing is, I'm here with Pastor Dan. Yeah. Uh, hello, Pastor Dan. Hi. Well, again, it was a great message. You went into our spiritual health, mm -hmm. our mental health, as well as our physical health. So it was all encompassing in terms of our health. The whole. Uh, man. Yeah, there, there was a <laughs> lot, man. You, you, man. I feel like. I got to sit in all the, the weekend messages, and I feel like there's something new every time. Uh, but for the purpose of our podcast today, yeah. again, in our Sermon Rewind, I want to encourage everybody to go check that out. What didn't we cover, right? I oh, know, gosh. I mean, again, there was so much, and, and man, good on you for going through those <laughs> things and having to pick what you're going to say. But what, on this topic of health, can we as the listeners kind of walk away with from our time? You know, I think there's a ton there. Um, obviously, when you Google health, mm -hmm. you know, when you do a casual search of, you know, videos on health, things like that, you're going to get everything from exercise routines, diet plans, yeah. uh, supplements, and, and things like that. And there's, there's different things that probably have been waves throughout the time. Um, some of you guys probably remember Things like uh, Monavi, I think it was called. Oh, yeah. Juice yes, that everybody yes, was drinking yeah. for a while. I remember that. Uh, how about Herbalife, yep, you know, yep. and things like that. And, and you know, uh, uh, different different supplements that people have taken. Um, some some people are old enough to remember Tai Bo. Oh, yeah. You, you know, and, and Jazzercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to Tai Bo, yeah, yeah, right? Tai Bo. <laughs> uh, and, and then the Jazzercise movement, mm -hmm, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff that's been... Stepping, I remember in the 80s. Stepping, stepping. yes, yes. So, I mean, there's there's been these moves. Um, kickboxing was yeah. a fad for a yeah. while. And, and all of it because people know that they need to be healthy. Right. Um, in recent times, I've been noticing there's been a lot of advertisements for... Uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a, a popular brand for men that is about like, you know, hey, it's okay as a man to need someone to talk right. to. Yeah. And here's a safe place to do that, yeah. which I think is wonderful, yeah. you know, because uh, when you bottle those things up, a lot of that gets into, um, you know, your, your, your soul realm and it can do damage, right. you know, and without having those avenues and things like that. But from the godly perspective, you know, what what did we miss? I think we missed a lot of the specifics. Yeah, yeah. We were able to give the broad brushstroke and the general overview. Just yeah. like I said, in the, in the spirit realm, mm -hmm. we did a lot of the specifics on how to build a healthy spirit. Right. In this, the uh, the the sacred discipline series that yeah. we did where we mirrored that with Genesis, yep. you know, yeah. prayer, mm -hmm. Bible study, um, fasting. Yeah. Solitude, yes. rest. I mean, we, we went through all, yeah. all those those. By the way, check out the spiritual disciplines. That whole series. It's a great was series. Great. Yeah, yeah. No, that was wonderful. I, t I tell you, myself personally, yeah. grew during yeah. that series oh, yeah. just because studying it, mm -hmm. and then obviously when you're studying something, you want to experience it yourself. Mm -hmm. And so spiritually, I believe that there's some very practical tools there. Yeah. That many times people they they look down on. Oh, it's just about Bible study and right. prayer. Well, right. yeah, God yeah. didn't try to make it so hard on <laughs> right. us. Right. Right. You can grow spiritually yeah. by reading your. Bible. You can go grow spiritually by taking time in prayer, right. um, you know, but then to go deeper with things mm -hmm. like fasting, which a lot of people don't want to do, yeah. um, but it has a spiritual benefit. But like, for instance, we never got into the physical benefit of fasting. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. There are toxins that are in our body. There are things that are in our body that if we fast will actually be released. Wow. New studies are showing things like that after seven days mm -hmm. of fasting, if you do a complete water fast for seven days, which, by the way, the longest I've ever gone just water, yeah. me personally, yeah. is five days. Yeah. I was 15 years old, yeah. so I was strong, I was healthy, yeah. I decided I'm going to fast my very first time fasting. Yeah. And I went five days, complete water fast. Yeah. I remember I was mowing my grandmother's lawn. Oh. I, okay, I made 50 bucks a month. <laughs> to mow my grandmother's yeah, lawn four yeah. times during the month. And so my mom would take me over there. And I remember my grandmother and my mom were sitting up on the porch watching me mow the lawn. And my grandma looked over at my mom and said, what's wrong with him? Because I was like yeah. trying to push the lawnmower just, 
leaning <laughs> over. Not, nothing in you. And finally, she was, my mom said, well, he, he, he's fasting. Yeah. And she said, tell him to go eat something. You know, it was like, <laughs> she just was, was like, he, needs, he yeah. shouldn't be mowing the yeah, lawn yeah. right now, you know. So if you do decide to fast, I would encourage start one day, right. you know, yeah. start maybe a meal, start, yeah. start somewhere small and work your way into it. Obviously, right. consult with a health physician if you're going to do something longer. Um, you know, uh, the, the longest fast that Pastor Jessica and I have ever right. done is a recent one this year. We talked about it from the pulpit, and Pastor yeah. Jess actually shared some of her health journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, the, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to Pastor Jessica to do a 40-day juice fast. Yeah. Now, even with that, she mm-hmm. still had things like uh, different nuts and seeds right. that she would eat, um, spoonfuls of peanut butter or right. hummus yeah, yeah. Uh, to gain protein, and yeah. she would do shakes yeah. that had supplements, nutrients, yeah. vitamins, things like that, right. so that during the process of that 40-day right. fast, she wasn't unhealthy. Yeah, right. But even things like juicing, if you study that, has benefits, mm-hmm. but you have to be careful that you're not so far on the side of sugars yeah. because that can produce things like diabetes. Yeah. You right. know, and so right. we didn't get into some of those things. Yeah. But I started to say seven days water fast, right? Yeah, yeah. New studies are showing that if you'll do seven days of water fast only, that if there's cancer cells in your body, that it'll actually start to attack and destroy those cancer cells. Wow. And I wonder, you know, how much of what God has hidden in the Word of God that, yeah. you know, when Jesus said, when you fast, not if you mm-hmm. fast, right, but when you fast, right? right? I wonder how, how much of that health benefit physically yeah. we're missing out on. And then soul, in yeah. the soul realm, when you fast... There's a desire that's coming up yeah. that you have to put under the authority of your spirit right. to say, no, I'm not going to go eat. Right. I'm going to pray. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're getting into that spiritual discipline, yeah. but then it's helping your soul to overcome temptation yep. and to be self-controlled or, or I like the word better temperate, right? It's like the word temperature. Yeah. When you set the temperature in your house, you're the one that puts, this is how hot or cold I want yeah. it to be in my house. And that's where it stays, right? It adapts the environment around you to come to that temperature. I think that's the same thing on the inside of us. When we fast, we're saying, here's a hot desire. No, I want it here. Yeah. And it brings yourself into subjection to, I'm going to stay right here, Mm -hmm. and this is where I'm going to be. Right. Well, I love that because you're debunking, Pastor, the... The notion that fasting is for the preacher, fasting is for the super spiritual, fasting is for all of us. For believers. As believers. We, yeah. we are called, to, like you said, he said, when you fast. Not this if. is not just for, for those who are over there on that side, the upper echelon of mm-hmm. Christianity, but rather for all of us. And I think uh, I heard one person say their fast is kind of like their spiritual oil change. Mm. Right? They, they can know when, it's, when they have gone too long without a time or a season of a regular fasting because it's kind of like, you know, in your car, you need an oil change and you kind of get recalibrated and recalibrate yourself towards, oh man, this is the the focus. And I think Pastor Justin talked about, and you've talked about that even in this fast, the, she didn't want it to end. She right. says, I didn't want it to end because the revelation, oh, yeah. or the, the way you're hearing God, the clarity of these things. Oh man, like it, that you don't want that to end because, and that's not just because she's Pastor Jess, it's because she loves Jesus. She follows yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And so, and then on top of that, the physical health benefits. There are benefits, um, yeah. And, and it's almost, it's crazy. It's almost like God designed it that way, Pastor Todd. <laughs> huh. huh. Yeah, another thing that we didn't get into was, um, you know, speaking of, of what we put into our body or, yeah. or don't put into our body, you know, I, I graced over this with the subject of sugar. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I think in some of the services I talked about things like red number 40 and, right, and right. you know, some of these things that, that if you're reading the ingredients on something that you're about ready to put in your body and right. you can't read right. the language of what's there, yeah. then the ingredients aren't necessarily something that you, you really want to put into your body. Right. You know, you need to, to look those things up online, find out what they are. Just because the FDA approves them doesn't mean that they're good for you. Right. You know, and so I've started shopping in stores that uh, are more conscientious about Mm -hmm. what is put into there. And I I still read, even in the stores that I shop in, even though they may have a lot of organic or, you know, things like that. um, You know, uh, but I mean, pesticides, how much of that do we want in our body? Yeah. You know, we wouldn't drink it out of the bottle. Why would we put small amounts in on a consistent basis into our body? Um, You know, uh, the same thing with uh, some of these genetically modified Yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, GMO and all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, wait a second, hold on. 
what are you doing to modify that? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and was God's design not enough for right. us? So when I look at those things, I, I wonder about the wisdom mm-hmm. of putting those things into my body. You right. know, this, again, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. I, I want to be healthy. I want to play with my grandkids. Right. Right. You know, I, I want to preach for as long as God allows me to. Mm-hmm. And I want to be healthy. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, those are things that, that we look at, um, you know, uh, our, our physical health. When we talk about things like exercise combined with diet, you know, not yeah. just to look good, yeah. to feel good, mm-hmm. to be able to operate good. Um, those are things that I think that, that many times people, people kick at because they have the image of what they've seen on, you know, a post. Yeah. Or a magazine cover, yeah. and they go, I can't do that. No, you can't. All right. the, the very small percentage of the world is going to look like that, right? <laughs> right. Yes. You know, yeah. that's like their superpower, you right. know, is that yeah. they, can, they can fit those clothes, you right. know? So, yeah. um, but at the same time, all of us have mm-hmm. the ability, no matter your body type, size, right. you know, specifics, to be healthy. Right. I believe. Yeah. Well, and you, you know, you're not being a buzzkill. I mean, we had this conversation. Like, you're not being... You're not just raining on parades. You're not no. saying don't eat foods, don't enjoy time and cultural traditions and these things. You know, like uh, uh, you know, tamales at Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, but I think just the mindfulness and the intensiveness of what we're putting in our body, sure. because we're recognizing the spiritual aspect or component now is uh, this is a temple. I want to be mindful about how what I'm ingesting, what I'm putting in. Right. Right. And and these extra sugars and some of these things. Ha- they, we're aware that they have different, uh, they play to our minds. You know, I mean, uh, one of my kids has uh, been diagnosed with ADHD and there are certain foods that spike it and there yep. are certain things that will help and that, and, and that will regulate some of these things without any extra medicines or some of these things. And so am I going to be married to a cultural tradition versus something that is just going to be better and more helpful for my mind and right. body? Right. Uh, and I think, you know, again, so so as to debunk this idea of, you know, we're, in the name of Jesus, you can't have sugar or if you really love, Je- you know, like that's not what we're talking about as much as being mindful and intentional about yeah. treating our body as a temple. Well, you mentioned, um, you know, your your child and, and how there's foods that can actually excite yeah. that right. sort of a thing. Yeah. I think about coffee. Right. I love coffee. Yeah. You know, I love yeah. the flavor of coffee right. from the time I was a child when I walked down the cereal yeah. aisle. It was cereal and coffee yeah. right oh, next yeah. to each other, right? Yeah. And so the whole time I'm looking for the cereal that I don't like, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> now, then my yeah. parents would give me a sip of their coffee. Yeah. I'd go, oh, that's yeah. nasty, right. you know? Now, as an adult, I've acquired a taste for it, um, even to the point where you guys have done your, your coffees to where it's yeah. like, do you taste the notes <laughs> of caramel There's and cocoa and golden raspberry. raisin? Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> Who wants golden raisins in their coffee? But at the same time, we're all right. going, yeah, like we're yeah. drinking a fine wine yeah, or something yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. But uh, but I, I really do enjoy coffee. Yeah. I enjoy good coffee. But I drink one cup a day. Mm. No more. Right. If I do have another cup during the day, I have decaf. Right. Why? Because it's going to interrupt my sleep at night, right. which sleep is important to your right. physical health and your mental health. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's an important part of that. And so if I drink coffee after, you know, about noon or one, any caffeine, really, I'll be up all night. Right. Not to mention that I literally, if I have too much coffee, even if it's in the morning, I'll feel my heart flutter, mm-hmm. which makes me feel anxious. Yeah. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. And, and anxious, obviously, is a word that's associated with anxiety, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So if I'm drinking too much coffee, remember, we talked about this in the message, yeah. anything in excess, right. right? Yeah. If I drink an excess of coffee and all of a sudden my heart's racing and I'm feeling anxious, right. am I going to make good decisions? Yeah. I don't think so, right? right? I'll, I'll probably be worried, yeah. more prone to make bad decisions based on fear rather than on faith. Right. And and yet, a lot of people don't aren't you know they're they're not mindful of those things that they're putting into their body and how it affects them physically as mm-hmm. well as mentally. Right. And then their emotional state rules their thinking. Yeah. So they end up saying, "Why are they mad at me?" Or or you know they That's end up so blowing weird. up on somebody right. or they 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 go off on their kids, you know, and then it causes problems in other areas of their life. That could be helped yeah. through simple diet, exercise. So rest. it's not the devil and all the. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, Sometimes it's that we're extra helping the devil. Of, yeah. It's that extra cup of coffee. It's it's our our diet decisions are. It's the excess. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the it's excess. the excess. And you know, um, we mentioned a word, gluttony, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I believe that America is a consumeristic society. Mm-hmm. Just look at the amounts of trash we produce, right? Right, because of plastics and single serve things, right, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. 
um, you know, it, it, it's a it's a consumeristic excess society. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's a binge culture. Everybody's watching this show. Everybody's doing this fad. Everybody's on this diet. Everybody's going out and doing this type of exercise, right? I, I remember, you know, these these little. Uh, for a while, there was yogurt shops that sprung up everywhere, right. all over yep. the place. Then yep. it was poke bowls was yeah. the big thing for a while, right? Yeah. Everybody's running to the next thing because we've been trained in our society to go have fun. Yeah. And now with the onset of social media, I, I need to get the same picture that I saw. We're, we're actually mimicking behaviors mm -hmm. based on images that we're wanting to project. Right. I'm out here having fun like everyone else, yep. and I'm accepted because of that. There's actually endorphins in the brain that happen when we uh, get likes and things like that on right. social media. There's right. pleasure that's associated with it. And so, hey, they went and got Poke Bowls. I'm going to get a Poke Bowl, use the same hashtag. I've got 37 likes. Yeah. I feel good about myself. And our mental health yeah. Yeah. is connected to a fad and a yeah. binge and that sort of a thing, which is unhealthy, rather than being content in who God made us to be. Right. Right, and, yeah. and so those are things that we have to be mindful of that as we're running to the fat, as we're running to the binge, yeah. I believe that there's gluttony associated with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not in the classic term, right, a lot of times right. people think it's just people that overeat or that are obese or something like that. Um, understood, right. you know, because that's an excess. Yeah. But at the same time, I believe that in our society, we're being uh, conditioned to be gluttons right. of experiences, of thoughts, of even what we consume and what we right. eat, and those things can be dangerous to us. Yeah. E everything in moderation, you know, yeah. and if it's received with thanksgiving, I believe it's sanctified by the Word of God in prayer, like it yeah. says yeah. in Timothy. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely scriptural, and that's why I say, hey, if you want to eat pork, if you right. want to eat shellfish, if you want to have tamales, like yeah. you said, yeah. um, but even that, you know, there are certain spices that, mm -hmm. again, MSG, monosodium right. glutamate. Right. I'm not using that, right. you know, yeah. things yeah. like that. Um, you know, there's a, a whole lot to be said about things like soy. Some people say it's great. Right. Uh, you know, look at the Asian cultures that do have right. it. Right. They're healthy. Yeah. Uh, other people are saying, hey, this is producing uh, hormones in, in people and it's right. causing the wrong things. And yeah. so there's the medical community is divided on that yeah. point. Yeah. But I think that's where everything is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. And if you can, in good conscience, put something into your body and you're not in excess, yeah. right? Yep. So have a soy latte. Yeah. Yeah. Ha have the, right. you know, teriyaki sauce with yeah. soy in it or whatever yeah. it is, you know, and that sort of a thing or, or uh, soy sauce, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. On your Asian food and things like that. But when you start getting into things that you know are unhealthy, right? that would be where I'd be cautious, yeah. where I wouldn't consume it or uh, consume it in uh, smaller quantities, things like that. And partner that with the rest of your healthy lifestyle. Right. Being active. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to sw switch over to the mental health aspect, Pastor uh -huh. Man, if we can. Um, and, and maybe, uh, you know, you talked about in the message, and one of the standouts was that the scripture about fix your mind. And I, I kind of kept highlighting that word, fix yeah, your fix. mind. Um, fix your mind. Fix your thoughts. And go back to some of these things. And, and really kind of put a lot uh, on us as the believer to not allow outside circumstance yeah. Uh, which I think is hugely important. Now, you also did discuss, because you weren't uh, shaming uh, any, any kind of mental health challenges that people have, but maybe where is a good gauge for us? When, like you said, one of the, I don't know if it's a fad or maybe it's just a, an awareness um, of mental health. And even, even in the Christian world, even in the church, you know, yeah. some would say it's, it's a positive thing that we've now been more accepting of the, I don't know if the crisis would, would be the right word there, but there's a crisis of mental health or, and, or now there's been more of an embracing where it used to yeah. be like, if you need a m mental doctor, if you need any kind of therapies that, you know, you're just not in faith or where have you seen the divide and how can you, what would you kind of add to the conversation of someone who maybe is on, uh, on the line about wanting to move forward with some therapy or talking to somebody or, yeah. or recognizing that there's been some traumas or challenges that they've had and not wanting to be not in faith but not wanting, but also recognizing this is an area of their life that's really becoming a big challenge for them. They have social anxieties that they can't really yeah. leave the house. Or, I mean, it's become crippling in some senses, but they're so mindful of not wanting to do things outside of God's will. Well, how would yeah. you speak to that? You know, I think just like we talked about, there's a variety of health challenges that we right. have faith. And there's a, a face, there's a, a variety as well of body types mm -hmm. and ways that people's bodies respond to right certain diets, yeah. certain exercises, things like that. 
And um, not everyone's going to look like that perfect mm -hmm. magazine cover image, right? right or right. that perfect post online, yeah. you know. Yeah. In, in the same way, I think that mentally people deal with things differently. Mm -hmm. and, and this is to speak outside of what I would consider to be diagnosed medical conditions, right? right? right. Um, we have seen a rise in those. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, there has been more study as well as there's been more awareness brought to those things. And I think that's good because there are people throughout history that I wonder, mm -hmm. right. were they autistic? Right, right, right. You know, yeah. were, were they uh, dealing with Asperger's right. or, you know, yeah. something like that? And, and they're high functioning, right. but man, their mind works in such a way that they were a mathematical genius or yeah. they were something like that. And because of that, these social things mm -hmm. that we see in their life, failed marriages and right. a lot of that, those types of things, may have been because of, of a, a legitimate mental yeah. challenge, right? right? right. That, that we see today, that, that we've diagnosed today. So I, I wonder about those things mm -hmm. in history. So outside of that, yeah. uh, some of the things that you're speaking to, and I mentioned, you know, and, and I apologize to anybody who I hurt your feelings, puppy rooms <laughs> oh, in right. colleges, yeah, right? Yeah, right. But, but, you know, we talked about the restorative elements even in that, uh, that there's comfort. Um, you know, I think people oftentimes wonder, is God against therapy? Right. Is God against counselors? Right. Well, the Holy Spirit is called a counselor, yeah. So if God is a counselor, he's not against counsel. Right. He's right. not against counselors, right. right? But what God wants us to get is godly counsel, mm -hmm. godly advice. Right. I preached a message on this on a Wednesday night yeah. not too long ago. Again, check yeah. it out <laughs> online if, you, if, this, is, if yeah. this is something that would resource you and help you. But godly counsel is absolutely what we need in our life. Everybody, I need godly counsel, right? right? right. I have people that I know I can go to and I can share my heart. Right. I can open up. I can be vulnerable those sorts of things. And, and without that, it can be a lonely world yeah. and it can be a scary world. Right. And everybody's mind is a landing place for thoughts. Yeah. And, and, and we need to understand this. It's almost like the, uh, you know, the airstrip, right? right. That there's going to be things that can come in and land in our thoughts. The Spirit of God can actually put thoughts into our heart. Right. Angels can actually come and speak to us, right? right? Um, we can see this from the Word of God. Right that there can be in, in the spirit realm and, and, and coming into the soul realm, mm -hmm. that, that our minds are open landing fields. The danger is right. that there's two other ungodly influences. One is the flesh. Yeah. The, our flesh can have insecurities. It can have propensities. It can have uh, desires that are ungodly, right? The, the works of the flesh are evident, right? right? And we see those things. And Jesus said all those works start in the heart. Yeah. Murder yeah. starts in the heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if our flesh is rising up, it can put things into our soul realm on that landing strip. The other place is the devil. And satanic forces can actually place things in our mind. It right. says that, that Satan was the one that put the thought in David's heart to number Israel against what God told him to do. Right. And that's a scary thing yeah. that yeah. we could be open to a demonic thought that would allow us to go through something mm -hmm. or to do something mm -hmm. that's ungodly. And so that's why the Bible says to raise up the shield of faith, right? Yeah. Yeah. Faith is based on the Word of God. So when we have the Word of God guarding us and the peace of God guarding our hearts and our minds, right. then the devil can't put those ungodly thoughts in, Yeah. right? And so that's where our mental health, we do need to guard that. And we also need to guard the type of counsel that's coming in. Because if right. you have an ungodly counselor, yes. Where is their counsel coming from? Right. Is it from their flesh? Right. The ideas and the philosophies of man, right. which, which the, we know that the world systems are swayed by the wicked one. Right. Or is it even by the demonic, even though you're not open to it, right. they might be open to it. And right. now they're speaking to you and you're going, okay, yeah. yeah, I'll go do that. Right. And then we get counsel that goes against the word of God. Yes. You know, and right. so those are things that, that um, you know, we, we have to guard and we have to have, according to our own conscience, what am I going to do? How am I going to receive? Uh, and, and then we, we, we weigh everything. We hold it up to the light of God's word. We, we, we allow the spirit to speak mm -hmm. to us about it. Because yeah. even with godly counsel, there, there may be times where people are saying, hey, I think you should think about this. Right. And this is what I would do is I, I was in your situation. And we pray about it and we realize God's telling us to weigh those things. But don't do what they said, even though they're godly with good intention yeah, right. and it's not sin. Yeah. But God says, that's not the way that I want you to yeah, do it. Right? right. Right. We have to be open to those things. And that can be a strain on us mentally. But as far as as keeping our soul and those sorts of things, the Bible is is filled with things. You know, yeah. uh, Genya came and ministered last night on the yeah, heart. Right. And he's talking about how over a thousand times 
And if your Bible's a thousand pages long, that's yeah. that's one time once right. on every page. Right. God is talking about our hearts. That's significant. Yeah. That we should we should put ourselves into an area where our soul realm can yeah. be restored. And that's where Psalm twenty three right. He restores my soul, right? We need the shepherding and the leading of the Lord, yeah. his counsel to be able to get us into that place of having a restored soul and to keep our soul so that we're not anxious, we're not yeah. worried, we're not confused, we're not afraid to go out, and those right. sorts of things. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Yeah. Well, what I'm hearing, Pastor Dan, is without saying it, I feel like you're talking about anything that would require my dependence on something else. Mm. Um, you, right? Like, get, get counseling, but don't put your dependence on their counsel, it's not on their the counsel. Guide. Ultimately, I have to hear from the Holy Spirit myself in all these areas. Yeah. I can't depend on a preacher on Sunday. I can't depend on, I can depend on the Word of God and, and, and what He's speaking to my heart, right? There's, all these things are great, you know, podcasts such as this is yeah. a great resource. Um, but, you, but you can't be dependent on when's the next podcast going to come out? When's my next therapy session? When's my next medication? All those things are, are, are great. And they're okay. Themselves. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. Uh, but the dependence is where I'm hearing. Yeah. The, where there's the, 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 some push, not, but the challenge for us to I, walk away with. I think that's, with. that's where we define humility, right? Right. Is right. dependence on God. Right. If God's not in this, I, I'm, it's not going to happen. I, I need good. God, right? Yeah. And in our mental health, I think we rely more on the therapist, the next thing, the experiences, the pills, right. the, whatever it is. Right. Not that any of those things in and of themselves are bad. Right. You know, I know that if I go for a walk. Right. It's restorative. Right. If I actually anything with a, a, a horizon. Line. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm looking out in nature or if I'm, I'm looking out over a horizon. So that's why paddle boarding, right. hiking, yeah. you know, um, riding a bicycle, right. any of that kind of, it's restorative to me. And, and right. as simple as going looking on a forward. Walk, looking forward. Golf. Yeah. Right. right. You know, um, any of those things. I love it because yeah. it just, for some reason, it calms me down yeah. to look out on a horizon out yeah. in nature. And so that's great. I'm not reliant on that. Right. It's my, my dependencies on God. Right. And oftentimes in those moments when yeah. I'm on a walk yeah. and I'm in prayer, yeah. my heart gets lifted back up to God. And I think that's where the scripture says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? All right. That's good. Right? Yeah. He's outside. He's looking up. There's mountains. There's scenery. There's all these things right. around him. But he says, where does my help come from? Any of these things, anything that I can see? No. Right. My help comes from the Lord. Yeah the maker yep. of heaven and earth. Yep. And that's where that perspective, if God created all this, yeah. then he can handle all this. Yeah. Right? Good. He sustains the earth. He can sustain my life. Yeah. Well, Pastor, in, in the next few minutes, just kind of, we're kind of landing the plane here, talking about the landing strips. Um, you know, one of the things I, I wanted to kind of ask you to just get some input on is, and we, we talked about before the recording, um, with health, with physical challenge, with mental challenges, is this something that is a sign of where we're at in our walk with God? Because I think sometimes our mind can go there. Like, mm. oh, is something wrong? I'm having this, I'm having, having anxiety. I've in a season of depression. I'm feeling a, a, a long extended period of grief or there's certain things on, is it because I'm in sin? Am I doing something wrong? Why do I feel far from God? Because uh, this can mess with our mental sure. health. Yeah. Uh, anything that you can add to that? You know, I think the best example in Scripture is Job. Mm. Job was doing everything right. Right. And there was a spiritual thing behind the scenes that he right. had no idea about. Right. That God was going to prove who he was. Right. And was going to prove the genuineness of Job's mm. faith. Yeah. And the, you know, yeah. uh, outcome of that was suffering. Mm -hmm. tremendous suffering like none of us has ever known. We've, yeah. we've not lost everything in a day, including our family, right. all of our goods, you know, that sort of thing, our kids, yeah. all, all in a moment. And then the next day lose our health, yeah. um, you know, physical health. Mm -hmm. and, and so here's Job going through all this stuff. And he had friends that were very well-meaning telling him, you're in sin, you're in sin, you're in sin, you're in yeah. sin. He maintained his, his integrity. And at the end of it, God said about Job that he never sinned against me with, his, with what he said. Yeah. That's an amazing statement about Job, right. right? Now, God did have to correct Job. Mm -hmm. Who are you, who is this that darkens counsel, yeah. right? Stand right. up like a man and come and talk to yeah. me if you can. You know, yeah. Yeah. Who, where were you when I created everything? Right. You weren't right. there. And right. Job says, "Hey, yeah. I'd heard with my eyes, uh, with my ears, but now I've seen with my eyes." And he yeah. repents and says, "I'm wrong. You're right. I don't need to know." Right. But we understand that that whole scenario wasn't because Job was in sin. Right. 
It was because Job was righteous yeah. that he went through those things. Jesus wasn't in sin when he suffered, right? right. And, and you talk about mental anguish. Right. He said, my soul is troubled even unto death, that he sweat drops of blood. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. He was acquainted with sufferings. Mm-hmm. So if our Lord went through these things, and then it says we're his body, right. and the Apostle Paul talks about filling up in his body that which is lacking in the sufferings of the body of Christ, mm-hmm. he's not talking about that the, the cross was ineffective or, or wasn't enough. He's saying that we're the body, it's going to happen. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're going through mental challenges, physical challenges, if you're going through even that, that anguish or those things that we're talking about, it's not because you're in sin. Right. It, it may be. Right. Definitely there's, there's sowing and reaping, and right. if you sow the wrong seed, you're going to yeah. get the wrong yeah. results, right? The yeah. wrong fruit. So um, understand that there are things that we do, you know, and, and like we talked about, excess, gluttony, drunkenness, uh, you know, all, all those works of the flesh that we talk about, those will bring suffering. Yeah. Those will bring mental anguish and yeah. challenges and all those things. And sin can cause your soul realm to be in, in mm-hmm. those things. But if you don't know, if you can't go back, if you pray and God doesn't point something out to you, it may not be that you're in sin. It may just be that, hey, there's something going on behind the scenes that you don't understand. Yeah. Uh, God could be developing your heart and using the circumstances, not to say that he did it. Remember, Satan's the one that carried out right. That's those right. things. Satan was the author of the sickness and the, the destruction in Job's life. But God used it to bring an outcome of refining him and using him as an example for our faith today. God works all things together for good. So if you've got cancer, it may not be because you sinned or because you were unspiritual. It may be because your body is responding negatively to something that's going on. You right. know, could be something in the environment. Could just be that your body had that challenge, or or could be a demonic attack against your life. But that's where you fight it in your spirit realm. Yeah. Right. We wage war according to the spirit. You keep your your soul realm mentally healthy and strong, and then physically you do what you can do to combat that. Whether that's surgeries or treatments or Diet and exercise, yep. health plans, things like that. But, you know, we're not unspiritual. It, there, was, there was a time where, uh, you know, it, it seemed like there was a movement that said, if you're sick, you're in sin. Right. What's wrong with you? Right, right. What are you, you doing know? wrong? Yeah. What, what have you done wrong? You know, and, and that's just, that's, that's foolishness. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because like we cited with Timothy, Timothy right. had frequent illnesses. Right. That guy was a spiritual giant. Right. Apostle right. Paul trusted him with the, the church at Ephesus. Yeah. It's estimated there were 750,000 wow. people in the church at Ephesus. We think we're so big with right. our church. <laughs> I got 40,000 yeah, people in my yeah, church. Right. That's a drop in the bucket. Right. You're a, a home Bible yeah. study compared to what <laughs> Timothy was dealing with. Yeah, a and, backyard worship night. <laughs> and it may have been the stress of that yeah. many people was yeah. causing him some, some stomach ulcers or something mm-hmm. like that. I'm not right. saying that's yeah. what it was. Right. But at the same time, the Apostle Paul himself said, if you could have taken out your eyes and given them to me, you would have, right? right. Something was going on. We don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the same thing with Epaphroditus. He worked himself so much yeah. that he almost got sick and died. And, and he, he says, we need to honor these people because he almost gave his life for the sake of the gospel. Right. But yeah. this guy almost worked himself to death. He, what did he need physically? Rest. Yep. What did he need mentally? Rest, yep. right? Yep. So there's some practical things. It's not a sin to work for the Lord and to strive, but is it wisdom? Right. And those might be the things that God deals with you on. You're not unspiritual, but you may be unwise. Yeah. You know, that's and right. I think that's where, especially in the, the realms that we're talking in, it would be wisdom for us to take note and to say, hey, what, what is an excess in my life? Am I, am I ruled by anything? That's good. Do I have to go to the fridge? Do I have to that's go to good. the coffee shop? Yeah. Right. Uh, even am I ruled by exercise and, and body image? A lot of people are. Right. They're not working out for health. They're working out to right. take a picture. That's good. They're working out to get the approval of someone right. else. Right. That's unhealthy in your soul realm. That's so good. I mean, because, oh, well, I'm physically here. I'm fine. I'm healthy. Like, well, then you go to the mental part or the soul part. <laughs> yeah. And, and the motiv- motivation. And you're a man pleaser, right. not a God pleaser. Right. You yeah, know. That's so good. Uh, well, so we covered the spiritual aspect in depth. And how it's important. I love the definition for our soul there, which I encourage all you watch. Talk more about our mental health and the importance and some overcome some of those, maybe some of your questions. Feel free to let the, us know of any questions you might have. And then our, our spiritual, or sorry, our spiritual, our mental, and our physical health. Physical health, our, yeah. our intentionality, the importance of being understanding. And really, we are a temple. And what we're putting in, and again, the, what we're putting in our eye gate, what we're putting in our ear gate, yeah. are things that we're also putting into our temple, allowing to take place. You know, you watch horror movies, scary movies, Oof. you're going to be anxious, you're going to feel afraid, you're going to, you know, have yeah. trouble sleeping. The cycle continues here. Yeah. 
Uh, and so great, Pastor. And I appreciate it. Man, I, this, this, your World Series, and I, I pray it's been encouraging to you all. Uh, we really are encompassing the aspect of our world, and I'm excited for this weekend as well as we yeah. get into it. Um, because, again, these are things that are things we deal with on the daily. Things We're all you dealing deal with, with it, yeah. Uh, you're not preaching from, uh, from lack of experience. You're, you're right in, in the trenches with us, and so we, we love it, Pastor. We appreciate you very much. I'm grateful, yeah. All right, like, subscribe, let us know questions. We'd love to hear from you. We're so excited to be able to, that you're inviting us into your time, into your work. Shout out to those of you on, on your jobs right now, doing lawn, mowing the lawn, folding, uh, I was going to say folding the dishes. Folding the dishes. Folding, yeah. uh, <laughs> washing the dishes, folding laundry, whatever it might be. Commuting to work, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Great. God bless you guys. Thank Blessings. you.